Welcome to another edition of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. Well, we all know about the culture wars and efforts by some to cancel and deplatform others with whom they disagree. But what's the connection to our economic health and future? Today, we discuss the hit on Canada's innovation economy with Dr. Pat Gambampati. He is the Associate Professor of Chemistry at McGill University in Montreal. Welcome, Professor. Thank you, Tony. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to have you on the program. I guess the first thing to do is to tell our audience about this grant application, which started the controversy, and uh, and uh, that'll set the right framework for the discussion. Well, I will say that I had two grant applications in the last one year. The first one was uh, denied and rejected without scientific peer review, only due to equity, diversion, and inclusion. That happened exactly one year ago. Then about a month ago, I had my second recent federal grant application rejected on EDI grounds. In the second case, it turns out they will enable me to reapply, provided I completely overhaul my EDI section. So the take home message is the EDI section is the first hoop that I have to pass through, that we all have to pass through as scientists in order to have our science actually gauged on its own merits. So uh, just walk our audience a little bit through this, uh, this diversity and inclusion uh, requirement now. Uh, obviously, this is not new, but it is relatively new. Uh, just maybe just uh, unpack what that means for the uh, grant applicants. Well, for the better part of the 20th century, at least in the Western world outside of the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany, people, the government funded science agencies and science agencies distributed those funds to scientists based upon the science and that was the end of it. In the last two years, the federal agencies, both in Canada and America, and I believe also in UK, have begun to ask for EDI criteria, social engineering criteria. And in the past one year, those criteria became more than just recommended or suggested, but they became absolutely necessary and arguably more important than the science of the proposal itself. All of this has taken place in the last one or two years. So uh, obviously, um, uh, I, I want to know how you how you felt about that because uh, you're a person who I guess li- has lived a life of diversity. Uh, yes. Let's put it that way. So walk us through your your response to that. Well, my response was absolutely shock, and I talk about this with my colleagues and my colleagues who have also, shall we say, had very you know off the beaten path experiences at the very least with race, with identity, with nationality, with religion, whatever it might have. And certainly I've been someone who has not fit into the milieu, having been a recent immigrant to the United States in the 1970s. And then at that time, you can play the part of many, many races and roles of people. So I've been able to see how things transpire. And that caused me to view people as individuals, to be an egalitarian, to, 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 to live as Martin Luther King tried to teach us how to live. And those are the things that we're forgetting about now. So what's happening now is that we are supposed to view each other only as individ, not as individuals, but only as groups. And this is the exact opposite of what I've actually tried to do in my whole life. And I'm not alone in that, where you try to rise above group think. You right. try to rise above identity politics and view people as they are. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, the other thing that struck me when I read about this story was, uh, you know, uh, this is no offense to our friends in the social sciences, but you're you're not a social scientist, you're not a political scientist, you're not a sociologist, you're a you're a professor of chemistry. So, which is you know pure science. It's it's hard science. So. This is one of the things that I found uh, interesting about this case uh, is that it's kind of seeping out of the social sciences uh, into uh, areas where I think we would, you know, when you look at mRNA research or some of these other things that you want the best people. 
that's exactly the point that we need to worry about is that in the social sciences and humanities and what I like to call the grievance studies industry, in academia, those industries have been giving rise to this culture of wokeism, social justice, political correctness. I'm gonna ask you to hold that thought. thought.